All right, boom, people, welcome on. Today we're doing a reaction video. I guess a lot of you, my content team has told me people love the reaction videos. So we're gonna react to the founder. I don't know the specific clip. I've seen the movie once, years ago. So we're gonna dive in. I currently run two investment funds. This is all about closing a deal in an afternoon. I'm, I'm actively closing deals. We just closed a deal today, which is awesome. So I, I guess we're gonna react to, uh, to this scene on from the founder with Ray Kroc. So let's dive in. Extend my life. Until you build more equity in your home or pay down the loan, there's nothing I can do. My business is booming. Unfortunately, that's immaterial. Wow, well, I've got 13 locations in nine states. It's a home equity loan. Then give me a business loan. These 13 locations, you <laughs> want them? Me personally. This is actually pretty funny. Uh, if you've ever tried to get a loan in a business, it is wild. Like you think, oh, like I have a great business. My business is booming. We're, we're scaling. People would love to lend me money. A bank would love to lend me money. And the answer is no, they wouldn't. Um, <laughs> it is uh, quite a shocking truth when you get into business, um, how hard it is to get traditional lines of credit like from a bank. Uh, you'll also be shocked how easy it is to get car loans, how easy it is to get a student loan, how hard it is to get a business loan. It's a very interesting way that underwriters look at risk um, and how us as consumers, oh yeah, you can get a $100,000 loan for a car, like no big deal, I'll approve you in 10 minutes. But you want $100,000 for your business? That's risky, we won't do that, we won't touch it, uh, it's hard. And so anyways, here we are, we'll, uh, we'll keep going. Personally? It's your business, correct? You own it. I'm the head franchise. I'm the one behind this growth. Well, that's all well and good, but you need assets. Have you been to McDonald's? Because we've got three right here in the Chicago land area. You should come by and take a look. No, I would love to give you a tour, give you a better sense of what I'm talking about. Thank you. Mr. Croc. So we got Ryan from The Office. Is this BJ Novak? Is that who it is? He's like one of the writers on The Office. Um, I guess they're putting titles on here, like see the opportunity, prepare. It looks like he's gonna come pitch him, but um, we were watching The Office last night, man. He crushed it on The Office, so. <laughs> Sorry, side note, tangent. I, I'm a big fan of The Office. Uh, we'll see what, uh, I think it's BJ Novak, right? Am I, am I correct on that? Yeah, I'm getting a nod. Okay, it's BJ. Help you? No, but perhaps I can help you. Harry Sonneborn, nice to meet you. No, thanks. We're very happy with our current supplier. <laughs> I'm not here to sell you ice cream. What the hell do you want? I caught a bit of your conversation back there. Sounds like you're having financial troubles. Why don't you mind your own business? I'm a great admirer of your establishment. Thank you. I eat lunch at your Waukegan location at least twice a week. Always a fantastic crowd. Your point being? Mr. Kroc, if you're not making money hand over fist, something's terribly wrong. That's kind of cool. I like that challenge with his problem. Uh, one of my, my favorite things that a mentor, we, we talk about a lot is if you can really think through their problems and explain their problems back to them, um, better than they can almost, you're assumed to have the best answer. Anytime you can explain the problem better than the person or as good as the person, you're assumed to have the best answer. So if you can accurately put yourself in their shoes and explain their problems, and for this, I, we don't have time here, but like, hey, Ray, you're probably in a business that's booming. You feel trapped, you know, you can't grow. You have other owners that are, don't wanna grow, but you see the vision and all you need is a, maybe a partner or two that could work with you and could change a lot of things. Uh, that was my best stab at it, but something like that along the lines of putting yourselves right in their shoes. All right, let's keep going. June, grab the ledger, would you? Come on in the office, Harry. So to summarize, you have a minuscule revenue stream, no cash reserves, and an albatross of a contract that requires you to go through a slow approval process to enact changes, if they're approved at all, which they never are. Am I missing anything? I'm about sums it up. <laughs> Tell me about the land. The land. The land, the buildings, how that whole aspect of it works. Oh, pretty simple, really. Franchisee finds a piece of land he likes, gets a lease, usually 20 years, and it takes out a construction loan, throws out the building, and off he goes. So if you haven't seen this show or know the story of McDonald's, this is the, the crux of Ray Kroc and McDonald's. He was not the founder of McDonald's. The, I think it's the McDonald's brothers, but there's two brothers that are the founders of McDonald's. He starts franchising it out. They don't like what he's doing. Ray is doing too much. So he, I think they're gonna decide right here, figures out that the land 
is the most valuable part of this whole thing. And so they're signing, like he said, 20 year leases. They're building a establishment on it and they can only buy land or lease land from him. So the agreement they come up with, and this turns Ray Kroc into a multi-billionaire and as not the founder of McDonald's, the McDonald's brothers do fine. He becomes the founder of McDonald's because he figured out the land play and they're going to figure it out right here. Let's keep watching. So, Sorry, spoiler alert. So no one told me, man, the big spoiler alert here. But anyways, that gives you a little more context. So the operator right, selects the site. Yeah. He picks the property. Right. You provide the training, the system, the operational know-how, and he is responsible for the rest. Mm, is there a problem? A big one. You don't seem to realize what business you're in. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. Mm. So there it is. He's in the... This is interesting. Uh, I've actually been debating this a lot. Think about this. Like, what business are you actually in? It's a really good question. Very introspective question. He's not in the burger business. He's actually in the real estate business. Uh, if you look at, um, you know, KPMG or Bain Consulting, all these big consulting firms, yeah, they're in the business of consulting. That's what they sell. But really, if you, and then there's always a layer deeper. What is, what's the business they're really in? If you go talk to anybody that works at Bain, McKinsey, they're in the talent business. They go to every university on the United States or on earth to find the best talent possible and recruit them. They understand the lifeblood of a consulting firm, or you could also double this with a law firm. Yeah, a law firm, they're in the business of law. The next degree back home is that they're in the people business. They're in the business of recruiting and attract, so attracting and retaining the best lawyers on earth. And they do that through partner plans. And have you ever heard of a lawyer like, oh, if I work here seven years, I become partner. They do that to attract the best talent. They're in the talent game. It's always one tier kind of in from the game that you think you're in. Uh, here, he's not in the burger game. He's in the real estate game. So we'll keep going. So it's a good question to ask, like, what business are you actually in? Uh, what business am I actually in? Um, it's very interesting to think about. You don't build an empire off a 1.4% cut of a 15 cent hamburger. You build it by owning the land upon which that burger is cooked. What you ought to be doing is buying up plots of land, then turning around and leasing said plots to franchisees who as a condition of their deal should be permitted to lease from you and you alone. This will provide you with two things. One, a steady upfront revenue stream. Money flows in before the first stake is in the ground. Two, greater capital for expansion, which in turn fuels further land acquisition, which in turn fuels further expansion, and so on, and so on. BJ Novak, I, I, I'm not loving his role in this. I, I'm feeling a little clunky as an actor. I'm just gonna review him as an actor for a second. I'm no big actor. But it's feeling a little clunky to me, BJ. But back to the concept, the idea. This is where Ray Kroc becomes a billionaire, is this meeting and this, uh, this idea of we're going to become a real estate business. Um, that's the game we're in. We have guaranteed landlords. It's kind of the idea of uh, cruise lines. Uh, cruise lines, it's really interesting. There's a whole analysis done on cruise lines. Cruise lines pretty much break even or make no money on the ticket price of going on a cruise. It's pretty much break even for them. They make all of their money selling alcohol on the ship. So they do all the advertising, all the marketing. They build these billion dollar, beautiful ships. They have entertainment. They have buffets. They have food, all the above so that they can get you to fly across the country and drink a lot of beer on their boat. That's the, like, that's the real, that's where they make all their profit is selling alcohol on ships. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Um, and I don't, I don't drink. I haven't drink. So we go on cruises. Like we're on a cruise for a black card in just a couple months we're making money, man. We're going for free essentially on this cruise is one way to think about it. But, um, if you really want to get them, you know, they're not going to make money on me. You don't drink alcohol on the ship. That's what you do. Um, that's where they make all their money. And so that's the business they're in. Uh, okay. Let's go back to Ray and, and BJ. I'm not loving, I'm not loving the acting. Uh, but anyways, I love BJ though. I love what they did with the office. So I digress. I'll let them keep going. Land. That's where the money is. And more than that, control. Control over the franchisee. Fail to uphold quality standards, you cancel their lease. Control over Dick and Mac. 
end result, you'll have the banks and the franchisees in the palm of your hand. If I were to do this, uh, the brothers, they uh, effectively would be... Yes. So, what do you say, Ray? Oh, there he goes. So, he uh, he ends on ends up doing that and takes really control over McDonald's um, because Dick and I think it was Dick and Ray, is what they said, the two McDonald brothers, um, they're slaves to him. They sign this exclusive agreement where they can only lease from him. All the franchisees have to go through his land, and if they don't. They don't follow his rules. He'll just cancel their leases. So he has them exactly where he would want them. Um, and so this movie is pretty interesting. It kind of, uh, by the end, you, you love and you hate Ray Kroc. Y- you know, he's a, he's a witty business person. But by the end, you, at least the way the movie portrays him, again, it could be totally different in real life, but the movie portrays him. And you go, man, he's kind of a, kind of a crook. He really took these two nice brothers, McDonald brothers, and he kind of screwed them. But at the same time, if Ray Kroc never existed, McDonald's would have never grown because the two McDonald brothers just didn't want to grow. They wanted to keep it one or two locations. They wanted to have control. And so you kind of love them and hate them at the end of the movie. It's it's an interesting way to to end a movie. And and again, we don't know what the real world is. That's how the movie portrays Ray Kroc. Um, It could be, maybe it's maybe way different in real life. Um, But anyways, that's where it goes. So what's the business you're actually in though? I think that's an interesting and very important question. Are you in the talent business? Are you developing software? Maybe you are in the talent business. Are you in the media business? Are you in, if you look at the four pieces of measure, uh, excuse me, the four pieces of leverage in a business, media, you have technology, labor, and capital. Which business are you actually in? Are you in the media business? Are you in the capital business? Are you in the technology business? Or are you in the labor business? What business are you actually in? Where do you drive the most leverage in your business? So with that, there we are. Send me other videos you guys want me to react to down below. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.